you'll stay standing for the presentation of our colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please place your hand on your heart and join us in saying our Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, Director Jennings, Chief Holmes, thank you guys for thinking of me among all the people that you could have chosen. I'm honored to be here. This crowd is a testament to how important this day is to these cadets and these new police officers over here. And so my comments today are directed at them. Uh, I just wanted to make that note. And thank you all for coming. I know you all would probably expect me to say this, but it is truly an honor to be here speaking to you guys this morning. I honestly don't feel like I've earned the honor to, to have been asked to speak to you. Um, I am, after all, just another cop doing what cops do. I've just been blessed with an extraordinary career at an extraordinary police department, and I hope the same for you guys. So when Chief Holmes asked me to say a few words to the group today, my first thought was, what would a cop's cop type of chief have to say to such a fine group of men and women? First of all, permit me to say thank you both for what you've already done and what you likely will be called to do. What you've already done is make a commitment to enter the most noble profession that we've ever known. What you may likely be called to do is fulfill some of the most difficult demands that this profession will put upon you. Without any crop of men and women such as yourselves who are willing to make the sacrifices this commitment requires, I fear that the profession, our state, and our country would be in grave danger. You all are entering this great profession at a critical time. I'm a second generation police officer and my 20 year old son has his eye on falling in my footsteps. As a new police officer, I often heard my late father lament that the job just wasn't the same as it used to be in the good old days. And you may have said that to me before too. I will no doubt say the same to my son when he enters this profession. Public trust for the police is at a perilous place. Fueled by social media and a media machine striving to sell airtime rather than truth in many cases, negative police encounters often make the headlines before the officers even have a chance to finish the reports. There seems to be a growing segment of society which exists just to hate the police, and they do not hesitate to voice their hatred at every, every given opportunity. Many times they're far more vocal than the supporters we have out there. But do not be discouraged. It is our job and in fact our duty to change this tide. As I ponder what I could say to you all to help arm you with the tools needed to effect that change, I've landed on a few pieces of advice from the perspective of a new chief who has not, at least yet, lost sight of the perspective of the working cop. First, in everything you guys do, strive for excellence. Whether it be writing a report to be turned into your supervisors, dealing with the public, conducting an investigation, preparing a budget, my condolences if you end up doing that, sorry, <laughs> or leading others, never settle for mediocrity. Unfortunately, you'll find that there will be plenty of examples of that throughout your career. It's just the way it is. Do not become another example, but rather set the example of what high performance and excellence can be. By doing so, you'll be surprised where you might end up. <coughs> Second, always keep in focus that you're public servants. We serve in many ways, some exciting and immediately rewarding, others mundane or flat out repulsive. But never lose sight of the fact that public service is what we do. 
Whether you're arresting a known felon or changing the locks on an elderly lady's front door because she's grown afraid of an estranged family member, you're here to serve. And there will be no shortage of opportunities to fulfill that challenge. That last example is something that actually happened at our department recently. Just an officer chose to do that. You'll have opportunities like that as you progress through your careers. Third, keep your body and mind sharp. You owe it to yourself and to your family to avoid complacency. If you're fortunate enough to work for a department like mine which provides good training and tactics, driving and firearms proficiency, take every advantage to keep those skills polished. If you don't, you must seek out those opportunities for yourselves. Make sure you are also mentally ready for what may come your way. Hesitation is a result of a lack of preparedness and may carry with it severe consequences. If you know what you can do and should do in any given situation and have the skills at your disposal, you'll always come out on top and have the pleasure of going home at the end of each shift. Finally, I'll submit to you that you'll have plenty of good and poor examples from which to learn as you progress through your careers. Recognize the difference. You'll be well served to take as many or more notes from the poor examples as you, as you do from the good ones. The last thing you'll want to do is repeat their mistakes, lest you be doomed to have others include you on their list of poor examples somewhere down the road. Again, I thank you all for permitting me to share this time with you. It's a special day for you and a special day for everyone that's here. Our prayer for you is that 20 to 30 years from now, each and every one of you will have the pleasure of looking back on your careers and without hesitation giving yourself a well-deserved pat on the back while uttering the words, job well done. In closing, let me offer one last thought for you. If you forget everything I've said but remember just this one thing, I will have accomplished my goal. Remember that every single citizen encounter that you have is an opportunity to create a new supporter, create a new enemy, or convert a fence rider into one or the other. If there's ever anything those of us at the San Marcos Police Department can do for you, please don't hesitate to call on me. God bless you all, and God bless Texas. Thank you. Should I call you by your nickname? <laughs> Big Country Russell months. Take a lot of tests, take a lot of notes. Got a few short words to say before I give you my final command to serve as the chief instructor. When you leave here to start your career, you'll be referred to as law enforcement officers. You'll consider yourself law enforcement officers. In fact, when your friends introduce you to someone, they're going to mention the fact that you're in law enforcement. In reality, enforcing the law is only a part of what you'll be doing. In fact, if all you do is enforce the law, you would be totally useless in about 75% of the calls that you go to. You'll be called to try to wake someone up in the middle of the night who's laid themselves down to rest for the last time. Only enforcing the law. That's part of law enforcement. You'll be the first to arrive at the scene of an accident start CPR and a heart attack victim, try to stop the bleeding of someone who's injured. Won't be enforced in the law, but that's law enforcement. You respond to traffic accidents and tend to people's broken bodies before doing anything else, and when things don't turn out the way we'd like them to, it's going to be your job to contact the next of kin to give them that message they don't want to hear. Won't be enforced in the law, but that's law enforcement. You'll be called to get cats out of trees, snakes out of the garage, possums out from behind the couch. The list is endless. And only a fraction of what you do will be enforced in law. But it is all law enforcement. You took this job because you want to help people. You want to give back to your community. You are members of your community. Members who realize that sometimes things need to be done. 
hard to do and you think that you have the stomach to do the job and you want to protect your family, your friends, and your neighbors. So always remember the reason you took this job. Your family, your friends, and your neighbors. They are your greatest asset. They will be there to support you when times are bad. In law enforcement, you're going to have some bad times. I told you several times during classroom that everything you need to know about dealing with people you learn in Sunday school and kindergarten. Simply stating we should treat people fairly with respect. So remember this because although you may not know the person that you're dealing with, they're the family, the friends, and neighbors of the community that you serve. So when you're in that elderly person's home and it seems like they want to talk, take a few minutes. Ask them about the pictures on the wall. When you have to deliver bad news to someone, type take time to see if their needs are met before leaving them to grieve on their own. And when you do have to enforce the law, be firm and fair, and remember that the community you serve includes everyone. To you, the audience, I say that you're very well represented here. The people we're entrusting to look out for us and willing to respond to every crisis are our sons and our daughters, our brothers, our sisters, our moms and our dads, our husbands, our wives, our neighbors. They're the 72, 72nd graduating class of the Catcock Regional Law Enforcement Academy. And to you, cadets 72, I say this. That thin blue line is a lot thicker than what you might expect. In fact, it's as thick as what we in law enforcement make it. So we're back to your communities and enforce the law. But remember that enforcing the law is only part of the job. The rest is being good family, good friends, and good neighbors in the communities that you serve. Being a servant, a public servant. It's not just a job. It's a profession. It's a privilege. It's an honor. Remember that that badge that you will be wearing is a public trust. That badge is supposed for reference to the Knights of old. <coughs> Back then, the knights up would wake up in the morning, they would don armor, they would hang a weapon on their side, and on their left side, they held a shield. The emblazoned on that shield was under whose authority they were to protect the public, enforce the laws, and do good deeds. You are our modern day blue knights. You will rise up in the morning with don armor, and strap a weapon on your side, and on your left side, you display a badge, a shield. And upon that shield is under whose authority you are to go out protect the public, enforce the law, and if you did, do good deeds. Since you're a knight, a recent movie portrayed a young warrior being knighted, and I charge you with the same words this knight was charged with. I'm standing for this from you, Sergeant Cool. Be without fear and face your enemies. Be brave and upright that God may love thee. Speak the truth always, even if it leads to your death. Safeguard the helpless. Protect the weak, do no wrong. That is your oath, that is your charge. In closing, I'd like to remind you of something that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said. He said, Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the call the children of God. Peacemakers, peace officers. I like that title too. Class 72 on feet. Good luck. God bless you. Welcome to law enforcement. Glad to see you too.